Welcome to today's lecture, which is about object-oriented programming with C++. What we will be doing today is that we will create a C++ class model from a UML diagram. So we will try to link better this modeling perspective from UML with the implementation in C++. We will also learn new concepts, the concept of inheritance and the concepts of constructors, destructors to describe how we build and remove instances of objects. So to recap a little bit, what is a class in C++? We know that a class is like a blueprint or a recipe that is reusable. So we can have, a, for example, a class that describes a cake, a generic cake, and then from this class we want to instantiate, that means we create objects, different objects, and these are really different objects. Like on your table, yeah, you sit in front of the table, you create, you have three cakes in front of you, this would be the representation. Yeah, It could be three chocolate cakes, but these are not the same object. They have the same recipe, the same blueprint maybe. So they could be all chocolate cake, so to speak. They could be one is a banana cake and the other one's a chocolate cake or so on. But they are different objects in the real world. So how do we model a cake? This is just the beginning of a model, very basic, of course, to be extended. But let's get some idea how we can model a cake. We know generally in C++ classes model objects. And to model any object in real life, it consists of attributes and behaviors. Attributes are modeled in C++ as data, particularly data members. That means these are attributes or variables that are tied to a specific object. And each object can have different values. Okay, so we can have, for example, a number of slices as an integer that is different for this cake object, this cake object, and this cake object. And that we need this description of a uh, number of slices we would put into our blueprint. Yeah, It's like on your table, you have three cakes, and of course the number of slices can be different for all those three cakes. And we have behaviors that are methods. We also say member functions to methods. This is pretty much an equivalent term in terms of C++ and Java. This means that these functions belong again to a specific object. Okay, So let's have a look what we talk about in terms of cake. We want to store for a cake if it is on a plate. So we would create a data member like called B plate, which is for Boolean plate. Okay. And this is a data type bool. And we want to store how many slices the cake has. Typically it has eight slices, we may say. So we store a variable in i slices. Again, prefixed here with integer. You can do it as you like, of course. And in terms of operations, which are our methods or behavioral of the cake, we want to eat a slice of cake. So we create a method called eat slice, and it returns false if we cannot eat it take a slice because the cake is empty. We want also to see how many slices there are left, so we have get slices. We could have called it also get num slices, but that's part of the modeling. So in terms of terminology, when we talk about an instance, we mean an object that is instantiated from a class, so from such a blueprint. We talk about member variable, which is our, which is often sometimes referred to as field or instance variable or an attribute of a specific object. We have method, which is a function. And we said here, it's a member function, in fact, in terms of speech. But this is a function that is actually bound to an object and often referred to also as operation. When we send a message to an object, that means we actually call a method. Yeah, But this is depending on the context. Sometimes people refer to it as sending a message. So signature is the data type signature of a function call that is typically declared with the function prototype. For example, we have here a function that returns integer, but it takes character and double as arguments. So now let's have a look at the modeling of a cake class. So we, we had our cake class UML diagram. Well, we could have here two attributes that we discussed, i slices and b plate. And we have 
two behavioral methods, which is eat slice and get slice. So we would put this like that into UML, indicating the return types or indicating the type of the variable. What we see here is we see minus and plus. That is now something new that we talk about today, which is the accessibility of members. Plus means public, that means anyone can use it and access the variable or method. So here in this case, we have those two methods that are publicly available. So anyone can call those methods. Minus means it's private. That means it's only internally accessible. And what means internally accessible? It means that methods like eat slice and get slice, they can see those variables and can access them and manipulate them. So basically we encapsulate these data properties into the kike, make hiding them from any potential user such that they can only be accessed over this public interface, this API over here, that we defined. Yeah, so this principle is called encapsulation. So how would, you would we declare a class for cake? Cakes, so we have here the UML diagram, and here on the left side we see the header file which matches this description. So we have a public interface and a private. Typically you list the public interface first. Sometimes people list the private interface first. Um, yeah, it's pretty much a convention. This here is our visibility, so public. And colon indicates that everything, every data or member function that comes afterwards is pretty much um, publicly available. So these are these two representing our two methods here. And then we have a private, which indicates that everything following in terms of the declaration afterwards is now private. And here we have I slices and B plate, representing this minus in our kike class. In terms of declaration of the class, the format is that you have a body de that is uh, delimited with braces with the curly braces and the class definition terminates with a semicolon. So we see here this semicolon. It's pretty much similar to a struct definition, only that we use here the terminology class and we have this additional option of choosing this visibility um, definitions over here, public and private. So the visibility, like I said, affects the data and functions. There are, so far you know about public and private. Again, private means that only member functions of the class can access those um, variables. Protected means, which is now a new level, it means it's similar to private, but it can be used of classes that inherit from our base class. We will discuss this later. For now, just important to know there are three, public, private and protected. So now we have to implement methods. So we create a CPP file, which is a C++ file. Here we have to declare the functions, our methods, that we would need, want to implement. Of course, we should include the definition of the class first, that the compiler understands what kind of implementations we now need to make. And afterwards, we find here typically the signatures of our functions, each slice, returns boolean, you remember, now we have here the body. So this defines our function with all the code needed. And here we can access now variables of the class, right? So we can access i slices, which remember is here a private variable in the class defin a declaration over here. So also we have get slices, which returns the number of slices. So these variables, this, um, like we said, member variables, they are similar to global variables, but they are really just bound to a specific object, right? So the value can differ from two instantiated objects, naturally. Okay, um, what else to say? Here we see that we need to prefix um, the, func the me member, the function member here, um, with the name of the class. So we see cake, uh, colon, colon. It's like cake lives in the namespace of 
um, at this class. Okay, so class cake you could consider is also creating a namespace. Yeah, it's not quite identical, but the idea is the same. So we have this namespace, and in this namespace now lives um, our member functions eat slices and get slices. It's a bit sometimes unfortunate, but it really means eat slice. This is how I read it. Eat slice is the implementation um, for the member function in the cake class. Yeah, so that's very easy. Get slice is the implementation for this function for this member function in the cake class. So yeah, so different classes can have the same name for member functions, of course. And uh, yeah, we, we saw already how this format looks like. If a return type, the class name, function name, and the arguments. So the signature looks pretty much the same as expected. In terms of implementing methods, we, we saw that we can use this isolate data objects directly. Something that I want to point out here is, and I haven't mentioned before, is that the, the variable this is always a pointer to our current object. So I could change the implementation of this get slice method to use this arrow i slices. Okay, that means for this specific object instance, yeah, I want to access the variable i slices. I think this makes very explicit what we are talking about. I slice is not a global variable. Here it could be a global variable, right? But it is indeed bound to a specific object instance. So some people prefer this notation and sometimes it's good to remove the ambiguity. <coughs> 